Did you know that the President of the United States isn't elected directly by the people? This is one of the fascinating and complex aspects of the U.S. electoral system, called the Electoral College. The U.S. presidential election is set for November 5th, but it's possible that the candidate with the most popular votes might not win. How is this possible? The president isn't chosen by a direct vote of the people, but through a process known as the Electoral College. What is the Electoral College? When Americans vote in the presidential election, their votes don't directly elect the president. Instead, their votes decide which electors will represent their state. Each state has a specific number of electoral votes, which are roughly based on the state's population. For example, California, with the largest population, has 54 electoral votes, while states like Wyoming, Alaska, and North Dakota only have three electoral votes each. To win the presidency, a candidate must secure a majority of the 538 total electoral votes, meaning at least 270. This means the election is not a national race, but a contest that takes place state by state. Whichever candidate wins the majority of votes in a state typically takes all of that state's electoral votes. For instance, if a candidate wins just over 50% of the vote in Texas, they get all 40 of Texas's electoral votes. Uh, can someone win the popular vote but lose the election? Yes, it's happened before. In 2016, Donald Trump won the presidency despite losing the popular vote by almost 3 million votes to Hillary Clinton. Similarly, in 2000, George W. Bush won the presidency after losing the popular vote to Al Gore by over half a million votes. This is because winning the presidency depends on securing electoral votes, not the nationwide popular vote. Monarch, why was this system created? When the U.S. Constitution was written in 1787, a nationwide popular vote was impractical due to the size of the country and the lack of reliable communication. The framers of the Constitution chose the Electoral College as a compromise between a direct vote and having Congress choose the president. It also gave more influence to southern states, where large populations of slaves were counted for representation purposes, even though they couldn't vote. Pros and cons of the Electoral College There are both advantages and disadvantages to this system. On the one hand, it ensures that smaller states still matter to candidates and limits the need for nationwide recounts in close races. However, it also means that a candidate can lose the popular vote and still become president, which can make some voters feel like their vote doesn't count. Additionally, it concentrates too much power in so-called swing states, which can sway the entire election. What are swing states? What are swing states? Most states consistently vote for the same party in every election. But swing states are unpredictable and could vote for either party. In 2024, key swing states include Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. These states will play a crucial role in deciding the next president. In your opinion, do you think the Electoral College system is fair? Could it be time for the U.S. to move to a direct popular vote for the presidency? Let us know your thoughts in the comments.